Hello, this is Sierra, and welcome to another video. Today, we're doing another video inside of Hermitcraft Seed and Clockwork. We are now moving on to Story 9, which is the perspective of Gran. Once again. <laughs> yeah. You're wondering if this is the last book story. Probably not. I have ideas for more, but we'll see. I probably won't write those until after I'm done with um, s the semester of school. We'll see, we'll see. Anyway, we should probably move on to episode 34, chapter 1. If you haven't read any other stories or all that stuff, I'll be, do, be sure to do so, unless you don't mind spoilers, or don't mind being confused as to what's going on. You know? Yeah. Let's get right into it, shall we? If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the description, the comment section, all that stuff. Any theories as well? <laughs> I also got a snip, please, so apologize. <sighs> Grant opened his eyes slowly, exhausted and confused, as he looked around the dimly lit room he was in. Everything felt sore as he tried to sit up, finding that he was unable to, as he pulled against the restraints around his wrists and ankles. He could hear groans and hisses through the walls as he wondered if there was an ex unexplored cave nearby. He wasn't sure he wanted to know, though, as he lifted his head over at the cell to, over, to over at, look over at the cell door, a typical iron door to ensure that no one would be able to get in or out without someone, someone noticing. Where was he? He sighed as he tried to find a more, more comfortable position than on his side, but no matter how he turned, he could still feel the cold metal chains on his skin. I was surprised that the men had done this. He'd probably been the one that made them do it as vertical now. Why had they taken him now? To torment him? Torture him? Get information out of him? He wouldn't tell them in anything. Was everyone alright? He closed his eyes and the memories started flooding back. He's, he'd gone to, with his escort to make sure Scar wasn't on his own in case Mr. A's men decided to target him. Which had happened. The two of them had just about... Just were... Were just about to get away with their friends to safety when he'd heard Scar crying out and he'd gone back for him, giving him just enough time to get away just as he was ambushed by one of the men and knocked out. He'd just about seen Scar disappearing into the trees and he'd hoped that the men was able to find someone to play safe. He knew that the others would do their best to keep each other safe, that they would be looking for him. Still, he would take any chance he got to escape if he could get these restraints off him first. His attention was redirected when he heard footsteps going from the hallway, down the hallway where his cell was st situated as he looked back over to it, wondering if he should call out. Chances of it being one of the cause, members of the cause, or his friends, pretty small, seeing as the page seemed calm and not frantic. Unless, of course, it was all part of the plan. He didn't think they'd find him that quickly, though. How long had he been down here? Anyway. He soon saw a shadow looming through the cell door window as a click could be heard. The door slowly opened, revealing a familiar figure as he gained a sour taste in his mouth. This man wasn't Mr. A. But he very well could be. <laughs> what do you want? Green snapped as soon as the man stepped in. Is that how you greet your guests? The man asked in amazement. I'm not the one hosting this party, unfortunately. Green muttered matter-of-factly. <laughs> ah, yes, that's true. The man chuckled. I just wanted to see how you were doing before Mr. A comes to see you. He's not here? Green asked in surprise. He will, surely, the man smiled coldly. You have to remember, he has to deal with hundreds of your kind all at a time. We're on a mission here. Right, Green replied with a nod, looking away from the man, down to the cobblestone floor. Is this where you kept impulse, prisoner? Perhaps, the man mused. Not that I would confirm that, or that it'd be any use to you. It might, Green said quietly. It'd give me some sense of where I am. Mm, I see. The man nodded as he stepped closer to the YouTuber. Well, should I let you in on what might happen if you try to escape? What makes you say I will? Green asked as he raised an eyebrow. You've tried before, the man pointed out. And failed, Green said bitterly. Yeah, you tried, the man replied as he narrowed his eyes. You know Mr. A doesn't like that. Green swallowed as he looked up into the man's eyes, seeing the hardness in them as 
a like a shell but too thick to crack. And Paul said, Mr. A wanted us to stop her. Stop her, you will. The consequences of him escaping are very much in effect here, the man said slowly. You won't like what Mr. A has planned for you, Green. We'll see if I'm still here by then, Green replied, narrowing his eyes at the man. You will be. There's nowhere for you to go, the man said ch with a chilling tone. There is a way. And that's the way, the <laughs> Green said rather effectively. The man chuckled. I can't run from us forever. Maybe I can. He took a he lifted the chin higher. I would be so defiant if I were you. The man warned as he pulled something out of his pocket. You can't stop me from just hurting you. Mr. A can, Green said quietly. He wants you to cooperate in any way possible, the man chuckled. Whether it's causing you pain, threatening your friends, you've already done enough harm, the YouTuber said, cutting a man off to both me and my friends. It's never enough, Green, the man said slowly. Not until your kind is gone, wiped from the world completely. You can't get rid of all of us, the Green laughed. More of us will just keep coming. The man laughed. I mean, just keep going. It's what your kind deserves. No one deserves this, Green admitted plainly. No one deserves to be tortured or killed for doing no harm to anyone. We're innocent here. You're hurting innocent people, tearing apart families. This is like a care, the man growled angrily. Maybe not you, but other people do, Green said calmly. Enough to try and stop you. <laughs> Nothing can stop us, the man sneered. They can try, he did progress. That they can, the man sighed. <laughs> we do eventually get the upper hand at the end, like we do not right now. Why am I an advantage? Green asked with an arch eyebrow. Eyebrow? Well, that's the way to say it. Eyebrow. <laughs> you have many friends, the man said with a dark smile. Sure they dearly miss you if something were bad would happen to you. You don't scare me. Green said defiantly, despite the fact that he could hear his raising artist ears. You will be. You have to go down with you, the man said ominously. <laughs> As he stepped closer, stole in the potion in hand. Now, would you like a taste of what might happen later or not? I'd rather not, Green said barely. Too bad, you don't get to choose. The man cackled as he started the potion in front of the YouTuber as Green winced, feeling the effects of the instant harming splatter onto his clothing and skin, seeping into his in, in like needles and heat on yarn. My friends will find me, he said rather frankly. We shall see, the man said as he pulled out another bush, and this time it was a sickly, sickly green color as the YouTuber's blood rankled. I have to give you just a little bit more taste once preparations are made. No, Green tried as the man threw the bush and as Adam as the YouTuber tried to squirm away, but the restraints wouldn't allow it as the potion splattered. Some poison splattered onto, onto him as he gasped in pain. Watching through pain tears as the man walked out of the room, wishing him well as the door closed, locking behind him. Green lay there helplessly, staring down at the splintered glass shards in front of him. They twinkled dimly in the torchlight and carefully brushed them out of the way. His hand, the best he could. Motion effects slowly faded as the pain subsided. He had a feeling that if he didn't find a way out soon, he'd be faced with worse, far worse consequences. Episode 35, chapter 2. Yep, I'm doing it. <laughs> the episodes can be as long and short as I want. Uh -huh. Grian aimlessly tried to pull out the restraints every now and again, whenever he was bored, which was almost always, since there wasn't much he could do here. He'd figured if he pulled enough, the chains would just fall off. So far, though, they were holding strong, as he suspected they probably would. He wasn't sure just how much time passed, but he could hear his stomach rolling, so he knew that food would probably be expected soon. He wasn't sure he wanted to eat what the men were providing after hearing what Impulse had been forced to eat during the imprisonment, his imprisonment. They'd probably be fine with more mild effects like weakness or blindness, or even slowness, since it didn't affect him too much. Being restrained to the floor, still, there were much more dangerous types that he wasn't sure he wanted to endure. If he cooperated, would it mean they would be nicer to him? That lower the chances of getting something horrible like that? He knew what that meant. He couldn't do that. That he couldn't do that. Not to his friends. It's still a thought, though. Scary dark thought. 
If he played it well, they'd trust him enough to let him roam free. Then what? He doubted that Mr. A would allow it. The man didn't even trust anyone, much less someone like him. The guard, on the other hand, perhaps could be persuaded if given time. Crane sighed as he yanked at one of the chains on his ankles, grabbing the cold metal as he pulled at it. The chain complaining with a loud creak. He knew he had to be weakening it, though, little by little. Maybe no one would notice him doing this. None of the men were running at running in, demanding him to stop, fiddling with the restraints, at least. Anyone even in the hallways right now? Making sure he wouldn't escape? Or were they so sure a couple of restraints would keep him at bay? <laughs> Maybe the first time it would have worked. But this time, he wasn't about to be defeated by some chains. He would get out of here, whether it's through its own means or with help. It showed those men that they could do nothing to keep him down. To keep them down, and eventually... Even the most foolproof plan would fall apart. He yanked out the chains again, hearing a crack. The chain again, at, hearing a crack as he gasped quietly, seeing the part of the chain had managed to snap a little bit. He yanked it at the other one a few times as the two cracked. Now being able to reach to his feet for a bit easier as he reached for one of the restraints on his wrist, yanking it as well. It was a bit harder since he couldn't use both hands. But it cracked as well. As he tried for the last one before he stopped for a minute. As he heard something moving in the room. He'd almost missed the sound as he turned his head to his the farther side of the room. Eyes of the green creature. The YouTuber smiled nervously, realizing this place wasn't probably wasn't well lit enough. He watched as the creature inched towards him as he managed to sit up, unsure of what how he should shield himself from an eventual explosion. And the creature came closer and began to hiss. He yelped in pain as the creeper exploded, launching him against the wall as the chains were released from their restraints. As he fell down to a, into a small hole that was now in the room, he attempted to remove the cuts on his wrists and ankles, successfully removing them as he stood up, groaning in pain as he reached for his, for his side. Everything was hurting. His head, his side, his back, legs, arms, everything. Felt like he should have died in an explosion. Miraculous, miraculous, miraculously survived. Who now? Sorry for getting out of here, though. Could he hear shouts and footsteps? Uh, footsteps running down the hallway as he inched to the door, hiding against the wall. He leaned against it. He was pretty sure the men had heard the explosion and were coming to check it out. Was it worth trying to make a run for it while well, they were momentarily distracted? Would he be able to outrun these men in this condition? Condition. Shallow breath and he tried to clear his mind of these questions. He was going to do this. He had to. This time, he knew where he was, or at least an idea. He had a chance. The door unlocked as two of Mr. A's men charged inside, not spotting him right beside them. They overlooked the hole. How did a creeper get in here? One of them asked. I thought it wasn't dark enough. Someone must have forgotten a torch, the man the second shrugged. Well, she doesn't seem to be here, so I probably didn't survive that. Green sticker as he slipped through the door, he began to run the best he could, which was more of a hobbly limp than a full out dash down the hall. He could hear the door leading to some stairs ahead. See the the door leading to some stairs ahead. It's open, as beckoning him to go through. He pressed forward, daring not to look back as he reached the stairs and began to climb as he heard shouts from down the hall. Don't let him get away the guard shouted. Stop where you are and there are alert as Green ignored them forcing himself to quicken his pace as he ran upstairs, seeing the door to a room that led to the outside. He rushed over to it, gasping for breath as he glanced back, hearing the men charging behind him as he opened the door, running out into the sunlight. He had to get out of here, out of there. He had to get away. He didn't care if you made Mr. A angry. In fact, it served him right. The man had no right to be tormented and imprison him and his friends. No right to put their lives in constant jeopardy. Served him right that he didn't get what he wanted. Green hadn't planned to give up on, to give it to him anyway. <laughs> Pain tears stung in his eyes as he tried to ignore it. the shouts from behind, the feet charging after him, the sound of feet charging after him as he pressed onward. He was too afraid to look back, too afraid to listen in case of one of the men had an end pearl. He was terrified for his own life, for the lives of his friends. It was worth it, though. It had to be. Help! Green yelled, disappearing into the trees as he weaved through it, 
hearing his pursuers getting closer, knowing he couldn't outrun them. Had he made a mistake in trying to get away now? Would he just made this worse for himself and the other hermits? He couldn't let the men recapture him, but what could they do? What could he do? He yelped as someone grabbed him and pulled him to his side as he fell to the grassy ground. The hand covered his mouth to keep him from calling out. He saw Mr. Ray's men run past them, failing to notice that he'd just given them the slip. He looked up to see someone looking down at him, calmly, putting a finger to their lips, signified silence. Ray nodded. The hand slipped away. He sat up, trying his best not to make a noise. Can't he just tried that, the hermit said with a quiet chuckle. I can't either, Green admitted, with a neat smile. Thanks for the apples. Anytime. She nodded. We need to get you get moving. Follow me. Green didn't argue as he got to his feet, following the hermit as he glanced warily over his shoulder. Not seeing any sign of the men, his heart was still racing as he hobbled over after his friend as they neared another patch of bushes with a hole going down to a ladder with a ladder. Where does this go? Yes, nicely. Anywhere you need to go, she said quietly. The main hall will lead you to the gem's hidden room. I'll let her know to expect you. Thank you, he said again with agreed and said with again with a nod. She smiled. Stay down there until you know it's safe. I'll try. The YouTuber agreed as he climbed down the ladder and reached the bottom. Do you happen to have any a healing potion I could borrow or something to eat? How about both? She offered as she knelt down, taking out some items and handing it to him. Healing potions and a few loaves of bread. There. You good now? I think so. Green replied gratefully. As he downed the bottle and one of the loaves. The pain subsided a bit as he smiled at her. Wishing her well as he disappeared down the hallway. Hoping he'd be able to find a secret room. Or at least someone who might be able to keep him safe. If Mr. A's men were to try to hunt him down. It was a very real possibility. Unfortunately, this is going to be the end of the video. And, yeah. The next chapter will be soon. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And yes, I will see you in the next one. Whenever that might be. Goodbye.